Hello everybody, RoseaCloud9 here. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are having a nice day. It is starting to become sunny out. More and more sunny out. I might go for a walk after I do this video and enjoy the day a little bit more. Um, but uh, it's been a very busy week and I wanted to do something fun. And this seemed like a very fun video to do. And hopefully this time I won't get interrupted or loud noises interrupting the video or phone calls or whatever it is. Oh, Facebook messages. That's what happened last time when I did this few, when I did this yesterday. Um, so uh, I was partially inspired and partially asked to do a video like this. I was inspired by uh, making, or no, sorry, old school models. Um, he did a tour of his uh, stash and I thought, I haven't done one of those in ages. I'd like to do one of those. It seems like a lot of fun. And, um, uh, yeah, he did a really fun video. You should check out his channel. I will include a link to that down in the description below. You can check it out. He's a good guy. He likes Japanese aircraft. So he's already aces in my book. So, uh, definitely check that out if you, if you have some spare time and you like good content. And I was asked about this, about what kits I had in my collection by um, a fellow on Instagram, Otaku Racing, and I will include a link to his Instagram page. So if you're on Instagram, check his stuff out. He does some really nice work. He's a, a Japanese modeler who's been doing some pretty cool uh, and very exceptional builds. I really like his stuff. It's got me more or less back into wanting to build more Japanese subjects again. Haven't done that in a little while, but I have a couple lined up actually. I'm waiting for parts for one, and the other one I'm waiting for paints for the other. Uh, I know that sounds strange, but I am. Um, so I've at least got two on the go, and most likely many, many more. So let me go uh, reorientate uh, the uh, camera and set it up, and I'll show you guys what I've got just here in my uh, hobby room. Okay, first off, I'd just like to apologize that some of the lighting in here isn't going to exactly be the best. It's not the most ideal place to have all the stuff that's not lit. Um, there's nothing much I can really do about it, so I do apologize for that. Um, secondly, this is not my entire kit collection. There's a lot of stuff I have in storage. This is mostly the stuff that I want to build and stuff that I plan on building soonest. So, and stuff changes all the time, you know, your interests come and go with whatever subject it is. And, uh, just gotta wait and see what comes and whatever I feel like building next. So, uh, first kit here is, is one that I, I keep threatening to build and I never do. Um, but for some reason my head has it set, I have to build this one in the fall. And this is the Tamiya Falco Wolf 190 F8-9 with the bomb loading set. So it's a pretty cool kit, actually. It's a very nice model. Um, and it comes with these uh, extra figures and this uh, trolley that has a lift on there so you can have the bombs look like they're being loaded on there. It's a cool little uh, posability. Kind of a little vignette that you can have with that model. It's a very nice little kit, so... Possibly this fall, I will finally get around to building it. Uh, next one up here is, I'm sure, one that everybody has. Um, it's, the, it's the Tamiya Spitfire. Um, let me zoom in a little bit more, guys. Let's, see, is that, let's zoom out. Let's see, is that better or worse? Ah, I shouldn't have fiddled. I fiddled. There we go. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure everybody has this one. It's still a good kit, as far as I'm concerned. And, like, if you're a beginner, uh, you can't look for a better kit than that. It's a simple Spitfire. There's not much to the thing. Um, I know, I know, oh, it's inaccurate, the tail isn't the right shape, blah, 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 blah. I, quite frankly, don't care. I think it's a nice-looking little model, and I'd, I'm going to build it one of these days. Because the Spitfire Mark I is my favorite version of the Spitfire. And the next here is the Messerschmitt 109 G6. This is the newer one from Tamiya that came out a couple of years ago. Um, this is a kit that I I really really want to build, um, but it's just it's a very intense little model 
There's a lot of stuff going on with it. There's a lot of parts, there's a lot of little details. For those of you who don't know, the, the cowling section here comes off, as well as the, uh, the flap for the radiator on the bottom here, sorry. Um, that comes off so you can have it posed open, you can have the cowling uh, open and closed with magnets, pretty cool. Um, it's just a very intense little model, there's a lot going on in it, and it's just, I haven't fully committed to building it yet, but hopefully one of these days I, I will. I bought, uh, I bought new decals for it, so. Um, moving on up here, this is the, uh, this is one of my favorite aircraft, uh, the P-47 Thunderbolt, the Razorback version in particular, I love the Razorback. Um, this was my purchase from Nanton Model Show two years ago, which I should bring up actually, I forgot to mention that. Um, the the Razorback, I, I had always heard stuff about it, but I never actually, you know, had the kit and then I bought it and I was really excited. And it is one of the most exceptional models I've ever seen in this scale. It's it's absolutely beautiful. I see why everyone has has it and has multiple versions of it. It's a beautiful model. Absolutely stunning. I can't wait to build it. Um, it's just going to be a very, again, this is going to be another really intense project because I bought uh, masks for it. I bought seat belts for it. Um, oh, yeah, and all the barrels are replaced. I replaced all of them with brass. And I'm thinking about maybe replacing the wheels because I would like something with a better tread pattern on them. The the Tamiya ones that they're they're okay, but they can't get as nice a tread pattern um, with injection molding as you can with resin. So I'm still thinking about replacing the the wheels. I might not. It might look okay, kind of faded and you know slightly worn down. Um, but that's one I really want to build. Uh, last one up here is the new Tamiya Spitfire. This was basically my one of my last purchases of 2020. Um, I didn't, I didn't really buy a lot of kits last year compared to other people. I saw some people. My goodness, you guys got your your government checks and went nuts. Um, I splurged a little more than normal, but not a not a terrible amount. And uh, this is a this is a lovely model. I so glad I picked it up. It was expensive because I had to buy it from my local hobby shop, which in a way I kind of regret because his prices are just it's not his fault entirely. It's a lot of it is his distributor. The prices are just astronomical now. Um, but this is a lovely model. My goodness, I I can I haven't seen the Edward one like in my with my own hands, but. I can only imagine Edward had something to do when they saw this and they went, okay, we gotta step it up a game. Because the Edward one is very impressive, but uh, I I kinda like the Tamiya one a little bit more. I'm just, I'm a Tamiya fanboy and I'll, I'll happily die that way. Don't get me wrong, I do want to try a few of the Edward kits, like the, the P51 and Michael has been really, really, um... Uh, what's the word, gung-ho about the, the Edward Spitfire. He really likes it, so I trust him, so I, I'm going to have to get one of those. Um, oh, yeah, Nanton. Um, the Nanton Model Show has been cancelled. They officially uh, cancelled it the other day. Um, I'm gutted. I am so disappointed because I was really looking forward to buying some kits there. I wasn't going to compete. I decided not to anymore. I'm I think I'm done with that, um, that part of my life, and there's a few other reasons, it's a very complicated reason why I don't want to compete anymore, um, which I won't get into on this video, but maybe in another one I will, but what we were going to do, my dad and my brother and I, we kind of have it as a boys day out, um, except last year because my mom came, she really wanted to see what the show was about, and my sister did too, but she got sick unfortunately, and um, some people from town showed up there too. They came and they saw the show and they were actually planning on going again this year. So everyone's disappointed. Uh, we were just going to go there, hang out, take a whole bunch of pictures, maybe talk shop with a few people, which is one of my favorite things to do. And uh, then we were just going to buy some kits and go home. It was going to be a great day. And they canceled it. They did it just to spite me. So, so sad. Anyways, let's move on to the models here. 
So this is the Fine Mold Savoia S21. Uh, I did the regular S21. This is the S21F, which is the Theo version. If you haven't seen the movie, it's not going to make as much sense. But uh, basically, he gets a new upgrade to his aircraft in the movie Porco Rosso or the Crimson Pig. And this is the upgraded version of that aircraft there. So I would like to build this one. And I probably should have built both at the same time. But there's not a lot of differences between the two models, like the one that I already did as a video. The big difference is there's a plate in the front here that's replaced on the top of the nose. The engine is, is slightly different. It has an intake, radiator intake on the front. Uh, no, it's not the radiator intake. It's, sorry, it is the radiator is on the front instead of on the sides. And I did not know this, but on Fine Mold's Facebook page, they said that the, the profile of the wing is thinner. And I don't know if that actually translates into the model kit. I have no idea. So that was very interesting and new news to me. Uh, moving up here next is the Haskawa KI-45 Toru. Um, I, this is a, a highly liked kit in the Hasegawa world, but I don't know if I'm going to keep it or not or sell it or do something. I don't know. It's one of those ones I, I, I'm like, oh, I can sell it, I can build it, and some days I'm like, I'll just sell it. I don't, I don't really know. I know it's a Japanese kit. I should be all over it. This one, not as much. I don't know what it is. Um, moving on up here, we have the Curtis RC R3C Dash Zero Racer. This is uh, Porco's nemesis, if you will, in the movie. And it's based on a real plane. It's based on the Curtis Racer plane. It's a very nice kit, actually. It's kind of sad. It doesn't seem like anybody builds it. And I would like to build this one. But I'm waiting for um, this paint to come into the hobby shop. It's a specific paint. And they just haven't got it in yet. It hasn't come in yet. There's a lot of slow stock coming into Canada. Um, and it's been a hassle. Like, Polar Lights is one. Most of their stuff is not coming in at all. Because they, they sold the company to somebody else, and I think they're I think they're sifting through all of that. So this is one that I, I am planning on building pretty soon. And this is the Aichi M6A1 Saren. And this is actually, weirdly enough, the I bought this the first model show I ever went to in Nanton. And this is the only kit out of the whole lot of kits that I bought that day that I haven't built. So, I'm going to be building this one pretty soon. This is the one I'm waiting for the paints to come in for. Um, the Saren is a really interesting aircraft. Um, there's a channel, and I knew about the, how interesting this, this plane was beforehand. But there's a channel called Mustard, and they actually just released a new video today. And... Um, he does these fantastic videos. They're absolutely beautiful videos um, on like aircraft, ships, uh, locomotives, and all sorts of things like that. And he did a whole video on the submarines that these took off from. It's amazing. I'll try and remember to include a link to that in the description. And you should subscribe to that channel as well. It's a great, great channel. You're going to absolutely love it. Um... The last one here, sorry for the jittery camera there, let me tighten that, is the B7A2. This is um, from Aichi. This is the Ryusei, which means shooting star. Uh, some of you may recognize this model. It's one of my favorite Japanese aircraft. I built the, um, I built the Fujimi kit years ago, and I wasn't really happy with how I built it, so I really wanted to get another one. And it's right here. So, um, for Otaku Racing, if you're watching, I think this is the one that I will try that, that method on that you're working on. Um, the, the skin method there. Um, I just need a new uh, tool, and they're out of stock. So, when it comes back in stock, I'll get some new tools and probably do that one and try that out. So, it's a big model. This is a, this is a very big plane. And I knew it was. I knew it was a it was a quite a monstrous beast, but it's it's a lot bigger, especially when you got it in 48 scale. It takes up a lot of room. <laughs> it's a great model. Um, moving on down here, this is the Bandai Tie Fighter. 
Uh, this is one of the kits that I hate because I keep picking it up and putting it back on the shelf. I'm like, oh, I'm going to build it today, and then I put it down. And I'm going to build it soon. I really, really, really am. Um, it's a simple model. It'll be a simple build. I have some plans for it, but there's not a lot to this little thing. Uh, the next one here is the Tamiya P51D. This is the limited edition Tuskegee. Um, there were two uh, Tuskegee kits. There was 48 scale and 72nd scale. The 48 scale is a little rarer. Um, and in a way it shouldn't be because getting Tuskegee decals isn't that big of a chore. Um, but I have the 72nd one. What's, what's a shame about it is I need two more Mustangs from Tamiya because all three of the options that come with this kit are beautiful and I, I want to build all three um, I think simultaneously is basically what I'll do it'll be shorter for me to do it that way it's a beautiful model I love as many of you may know I'm a huge fan of the Tuskegee Pilots and um, that's why I bought this years ago when it was first released so, yeah, I just need to get two more P-51s and I'm good to go. So let's move up in the world. <laughs> he said. It's a pun. Um, I'm going to use my pointer Assassin's Creed cane sword here. I'll use it as a pointer. Um, this is the Fine Molds A6M3-0 in 72nd scale. These were only released through Scale Aviation um, magazine. And a different version was released through Model Graphics. I paid more than I should have for this, but it, at the time it was the only way to get this one. Now, since then, Fine Molds has released the A6M1, uh, A6M1 and the A6M1 prototype. I think it's a dual set. I don't really know. I haven't looked into it yet. But this is one I hope to build in the next little while. I've, I'm finally going to cave in and build it. It, it. It's such a rarity kit, but I'm like, build it. Just build it. That's why you bought it. You know, I'm ra I rarely buy kits to collect. Rarely. I'm, I'm usually more into building stuff. This is the uh, Tamiya Zero. This is the A6M2B. This came with the... Uh, it won't fit down. This one came with the uh, book uh, that I really wanted. I have done um, video reviews on both of these. You can see them on the channel. I recently found the book for sale and it was really expensive. It was more expensive than I paid for the kit. So I'm glad that I, I uh, caved in and bought it. So that was a good one for me. Um, moving on over here. This is one uh, I, I really wanted to build but I don't have the decals for it yet. Um, this is a beautiful model. This is the 1100, sorry, 1100 scale Space Shuttle Orbiter from Tamiya. I think what puts people off of building this is it's a weird scale. Um, Tamiya had the 100 scale for a while. They did do one a little while ago, about five, six years ago. They released uh, an airliner in that scale, which was surprising. Um... But this is a really beautiful model. It is gorgeous. They they really put a lot of effort into this tiny kit. And uh, the instructions are just information galore. You can't, you can't beat it. Um, yeah, like I said, this is one that I wanted to build back in January. But they don't have the decals ready. They will soon. When they do, I'm going to order them and I'm going to build it. Um, the decals are worth it. Just trust me on this one. It's worth the wait. Like, I'm not going to build this without them. They're they're so nice. So this is a really fun model. Uh, I can't wait to start this one. Um, up here, these were some of my summertime purchases last year. Um, this is the Polar Lights Defiant in 1000 scale. I'm a huge fan of DS9. It's my third favorite Star Trek series. And I was really curious to see how big a 1000 scale Defiant was compared to other ships. So I got one of those on a Black Friday sale at the local hobby shop. And I'm kind of glad I did because I think it's going to go away soon. Uh, then over here, this is the 
Um, USS Grissom. Let me try and see. Hold on a sec, guys. Oh my gosh, that makes all the difference in the world. Okay, I should almost start this video over again. It, the sun just went behind a cloud. Um, this is the 1000 scale USS Grissom. It's one of my favorite uh, Star Trek ships, the Oberth class. And it comes with a Klingon Bird of Prey. They're both 1000 scale. It's very expensive to get this kit in Canada and rather difficult, oddly enough. Um, usually this kit is about $45 Canadian, and my sister was in, uh, Michael's, and she sent me, um, she sent me a message, she's like, do you have this kit? And I nearly flipped out of my chair, because I didn't think it would be this. And, uh, she had a coupon for 45% off, so I got the kit for, like, 20, I think $22 or something. It was very cheap. Um, what's really sad about it, though, is the kits basically only fill about this much of the box. So all of this is just air. There's like nothing in the box. There's, I think the whole kit is under 20 parts, like including both models. It's kind of sad that it's so expensive for such a tiny little thing, but what do you do? You get it on sale. Um, this is my first and so far only purchase of 2021. And it's one that I'm super excited about. And I was hoping to find more of these at Nanton. I was hoping to find the base star, because um, Greg got one and it looks super cool and I should have bought one when it came out. I should have bought all of these when they came out. This is the 30th anniversary, which is the ones that I want, because they have the newer parts. Um, yeah, and the Cylon Raider, uh, this was still sealed. I won it in an auction, nobody else bid on it, I was really excited. Um, still sealed, shipping from Canada, I love it. I absolutely love it. I like it more than the monogram one because it's smaller. I have seen the monogram kit and um, at the shows. I've seen two or three of them, at least two, and they're huge. So I was really happy to get this one. I have the Viper. Um, it's on the side of the box. I can see a picture of the Viper. Uh, I do have the Viper. I built it when I was in high school. I got an A on it for art. Um, and. I want to do a video where I'm restoring it and making it better because I didn't use the right gray and I'm not happy with the red and a lot of other stuff. So I really want to restore it. I was talking to a guy about decals for it. Uh, I bought the decals from him and they came back in really poor quality. And sadly he has had so many issues. I don't know if I'm ever going to get the decals. And it's come to a point where I'm thinking like I should just search out and buy another Viper model. So hold on one sec. So yeah, I'm really, I'm thinking like I should look for another Viper. Um, maybe that would be easier for me. I don't know. Like then I have the decals for the Pegasus and the Galactica. Um, like I said, I, these were kits. I was hoping to find another Viper and base star at Nanton. And obviously that's not happening. And I was hoping to find some of the Mobius kits because Mobius is no longer making um, the Battlestar series. So... If you have them, hold on to them. Um, which is only the worst because there's a guy in Edmonton who's selling them. And he had them at a good price, but he wouldn't ship them. So I just spent last night crying in bed. <laughs> Not really, but a little. Yeah, he's like, oh, these are only pick up. And I'm like, I can't pick them up. I can't. You can ship them in the mail. He wouldn't do it. I was very sad. So, uh, over here, this is going to be my next build after I finish all the stuff on my table. Um, this is sent to me by Greg at SteveTheFish.net. He sent this to me years ago because this is my favorite character from Yamato2199. Or second favorite character, I should say. Which is uh, Yamamoto. She's a really cool fighter pilot. I like her arc. And she really has this spirit of a fighter pilot in the show that I really like. And um, he sent me this because it was really hard to get in Canada. And I'm going to build it next. I'm going to build it next. I'm going to build it for you, Greg. I was scared to build it at first because I was worried about ruining it. But I'm okay. I, I'm going to be okay now. So I pulled that one up from downstairs because I'm going to build that soon. Um, this guy is my favorite character from Yamato. And that's the Analyzer. He's great. Um, he's a little posable robot. And uh, I'm going to, I bought some paint for him, I just haven't built him yet. I'm a little hesitant to build that one because I've, 
I've never really built a Gundam type of kit before, so I'm gonna build a Gundam, and once that goes through and I, I successfully build a Gundam, I'm probably gonna pick him up and build him. So, next one here is the Cosmo Navy set. Um, this is twofold. This was given to me by my brother. He decided he wanted to collect the Gamala stuff, so he gave this one to me instead. He had built it, but, um, and actually, I think he painted some of them, but uh, it's three ships. Greg was kind enough, as usual, I should mention that, that he sent me uh, the paint set for it that Mr. Hobby makes. So, um, the only thing that keeps me from building this kit is I, I, I don't like the bases that come with it, and I want to make a new display base for it. And I keep forgetting, every time I go into the hobby shop, I keep forgetting to buy some metal tubing so I can make the new bases. So my goal is to go in and buy the metal uh, so I can make the bases. I have to remember to do that this time. Have to do it. And the one on the very bottom here is, um, <laughs> it's hiding behind the, uh, the orbiter. You can just barely make out that little Star Trek. That's the Vorcha class Klingon battle cruiser. Um, I was super excited when they released that and I bought it right as it came out. And um, I started it last summer, and I'm sorry to say I got a little bored with it, but I'm going to pick it up again next summer, this summer, and finish it, and there'll be a whole build video on on that one. Okay. So i got to go and uh, readjust the camera here, and the lighting in particular, and I'll show you what's above all of these. Okay, let's try this again. Of course I start recording. And two minutes in, everybody seems to need me. Okay, no one needs me anymore. Uh, so I'm back here. This is the uh, Tamiya A6M2B Zero Fighter in 30 second scale. I built this one already, a um, long time ago. I just keep the box because, number one, I really like the box art of these Tamiya big scales. And um, it has some of the spare parts in it. Like it has the, um, the wing tips. There, they're uh, they're they're folded. Oh, I forgot to turn on this light. Well, let me see if that'll help. It's a little brighter, but a little glare. Only on that one though. So it has some spare parts, the decals and the display stand and all that sort of thing. So, um, it is one of the kits I would like to get a second one of in the near future. But we'll wait and see. Uh, this is the Spitfire Mark Nine. Johnny Johnson markings. Uh, this again I kept again mostly for spare parts that are in there. This one does have the display stand. This one you had to permanently drill a hole in there in the fuselage to make um, room for the display stand. So it was always visible. Uh, with the P-51 and the Spitfire, uh, Tamiya got really creative and hid them. So you can you can pose this on the stand flying anytime you want there's no obvious hole in the bottom of the of the model it's very very clever how they did that I don't think they did that with the Corsair and I don't think that the Mosquito has I don't think the Mosquito has a stand at all actually I don't have either one of those but uh, if anybody wants to buy a built Tamiya Spitfire it's built it looks like this more or less uh, leave me a message down below I'd gladly sell you one. Um, this is one I. This is like my summertime project. I'm thinking it's the Spitfire Mark 16E, and this is kind of the least popular Spitfire. Like not a lot of people like it or bought it, and I do have a bit of a theory for that. It is the it is the bubble top version, and I think that was the problem. I think most people thought it kind of looked like a Mustang, and it. I've heard from people it loses the charm of the Spitfire with the bubble top, but personally I like it. I don't have a problem with it. And um, I bought a whole bunch of parts for it. And it's just... I think this is the year when I'm finally going to build it. I really, really want to. That's the other thing. And moving on up, lastly here, this is going to be a hard one to see. I apologize. Um... This is cool. This is a first edition 
a first edition Tamiya uh, Zero. This is the A6M5. Now the first edition doesn't come with the metal um, cannon barrels and the metal uh, pitot tube on the wing. And I thought when I built the A6M2, it came with the metal pitot tube, and I thought, well, I don't, I don't really need that. And I bumped it probably about four times when I was building it, and I kind of went, nope, screw it, I'm going to get one. So hopefully that'll come in the mail sometime soon, because I did order that. Um, mostly because I proved how clumsy I could be. So that is one that I really want to build, even though it's the first edition, I don't really care, I just really want to build it. I'm not, I'm not a huge, like, model kit collector. Like, there are some that I won't build, I do have some, but very, very, very few compared to other people that I know of. Um, so moving on down over here, um, here's just a few. So. This is the Airfix Curtis Hawk or P40 in 72nd scale. I bought one for Greg a few years back and he opened it and I was like, why didn't I buy one? So I did, I felt really foolish. It's one of the ones that I would like to build and it's again one of the ones that I pick up and put down all the time. Like, oh, I'm gonna start this one today and then I don't. And above that is the Raiden or Thunderbolt or Jack. And that was sent to me by, oh no, his username just left my head, uh, Messer109, Todd. He sent me that. He sent me a few, and that's one that I really want to build. I'm just waiting for a book to come in stock, because I want to do some stuff with that one. it will be a very fun project, but i got to wait for all this stupid virus stuff to go away. I was just denied a sale today, or yesterday. They were like, no, we can't ship to Canada because of because of the virus and they shipped already all the other places. Very annoying. Um, these two are ones that I, I am going to be building soon. I just keep putting them off. I guess I'm not in an F-104 mood at the moment, so that's maybe why. But I will be soon, I know that. Um, they're both, I, I've done videos on it. One is from um, Mark One Models at the top here. This is the um, Eiko, it's the all Japanese version. And then there's this F-104G, uh, Greg sent me this one, Jerry sent me this one, and there's enough decals in here that I can build three Japanese um, starfighters. So that's what I'm going to do with those. That's going to be a pretty fun, exciting build. I think why I also might be hesitant to build them is because the um, they're, they're so tiny, and I'm just worried that it won't turn out. But I have had some real good success with... Um, smaller models lately so um like the the sweet um zeros that i did uh that turned out more or less i think like 95 percent of the footage was just fine so we weren't worrying about nothing uh over here uh have the this is the RAF version of the 48 scale of the p40 or tomahawk mark ii um, that is one that I do want to build. I just really don't like the options that come with it. They just, no, I shouldn't say I don't like them, because they're fine. I, I, they are nice. But they're not just, they just don't vibe with me at the moment. I'm just not that excited about them. So I'm, I'm keeping an eye out for something else. And I had thought about doing another, uh, doing one as a flying tiger, because Greg has been doing a whole bunch of those. And I thought that'd be kind of fun. And the more I thought about it, I was like, ah, I'd rather just have one Flying Tiger, the little 72nd scale one, and maybe do something else. I don't know. Who knows? Um, this is one of my favorite aircraft. It's my top five favorite aircraft. This is the Bristol Blenheim Mark IV. Uh, in particular, the Mark IV is my favorite. I love the weird nose that it has. Um, it's just, it's just one of my favorite planes. It's an ugly duckling and I just, I love it. It's such a great little, little aircraft. And that's another one I keep picking up and putting down again. I do that a lot. As I'm sure many other people do too. Um, sorry. Seems I got a message here. I do have to check this. No, I don't, because it's not working. Never mind. Sorry. Uh, the next one is the 262 from Airfix. 
Uh, it's kind of an airfix pile, I guess. Uh, this is one I just, I just, uh, it's another one where I, airfix are really weird because sometimes they'll do, um, they'll do a decal set with their model and it's just amazing and I have to buy like two or three. Um, and this is just one, I didn't like any of them as much. So I want to find some new ones and I've been keeping an eye out, but I just haven't found any that I really, really like. Uh, and then above it is the P51 and 48 scale. Very impressed with that model, I have to say. Very, very impressed with what Airfix did. Um, I'd like to get the Edward one as well. I have, I have replacement decals for this one. I have replacement, well, I have decals for the Edward one whenever I get one of those. I don't know if they're pushing out the the P51 again because their factory burned down. Um, so a lot of production has been halted. And then above there is the Millennium Falcon. You would have seen a video of that a little while ago, thanks to Darren. Um, kind of in the last of the corner here. This is one I should just shut up and build one day. It is a Fujimi Tachikawa Ki-36. It's a trainer. It was a reconnaissance plane. It was a whole bunch of stuff, and um, yeah, I just got to shut up and build that one. It's a beautiful, cute little plane. I absolutely love it. Uh, and then I got three Matchbox um, Starfighters, and I really did want to build those last year, but then everything with the virus happened, and I couldn't. Uh, I want to buy some ejection seats for them. Uh, just to, just because that, that seat is very identifiable when you see it in a Starfighter. I just want to get the seats. And the store that I used to buy them from, they've temporarily closed. So, gotta wait and see. Uh, and then above here, uh, this is a really cool one. This is the TA-152, which was the high altitude, basically the high altitude version of the Focke-Wulf 190. Had a longer nose, longer fuselage, and longer wings. And uh, this is from Aoshima. Greg sent me this, and then he told me some very sad news that the molds had been destroyed. And I have no idea why. Because all we have are frog and that really what I understand to be awkward dragon kit. Um, this would have been a huge seller here in Canada and US and in Europe. It's a beautiful little model. Although people are getting more fussy, I've noticed. It's the wrong scale, it's the wrong base, it's the wrong colors, I can't buy decals for it. It's like, can't please anybody anymore. Whenever I, whenever I see a new kit, I just, I lose my mind. Because it's just, you, you, you see all this negativity. It's like, just, don't buy it, it's okay. It's fine, you don't have to buy it. No one is taking your money out of your wallet and handing you a kit. It's It doesn't work that way. So this is kind of the last little section. This is more or less the sci-fi section. Um... So this is not the Klingon D7 Battlecruiser. I already built that. It's an awful kit. I can't recommend it to anybody. It was not fun. Um, but what's in there is the old AMT Galileo shuttlecraft. And I bought it when it was still really rare. I found a guy in um, Montreal, I think. He was selling it. The box was beat up. But again, I'm not a collector, so I didn't really care. And uh, when it got to me, it just reeked of cigarettes, and that's something I'm quite allergic to. So I threw away the box, I threw away the plastic, and I just shoved all the parts in there. And I was going to build it, but then they came out with the new one. So I don't know what to do anymore. I'd rather get the new one, because the, the fit on this... Uh, on the old Galileo shuttlecraft is atrocious. Oh my gosh, it's it's a lot of work. So I might just make a custom shuttle out of this kit here. This is the 95 release. This isn't a first edition one. Um, I might just make a make a custom shuttle out of that, which would be kind of cool. Uh, and next to it is the Nebula class conversion kit. Um, I picked this up from Nanton four years ago, and it's one that I really, really want to build, but um, you need an Enterprise D, you need, you need the Enterprise D for the saucer section here, and I think for the pylons, I can't remember now, and most importantly, the warp engines. I have the saucer section, 
I have a spare saucer section that my brother gave me years ago. He found it at a thrift store. But the problem is, the warp engines are destroyed. They were beat up. So if anybody has, like, spare warp engines from one of the, the 1400 scale Enterprise, uh, the Enterprise D that is, send me a message because I... Maybe we can work out a deal or something, because I would, I would love to be able to finish and build the Nebula class. It's one of my favorite ship designs. Um, so then up here we have two of the Enterprise. These are both basically the same kit. The one on the top comes with the SS Botany Bay. That was their kind of gimmick to resell the kit again. Um, it's a pretty nice model, actually. I built one years and years ago with this box. And, uh... I've just always wanted to build one again. I've got two, so I can build the Space Seed version. And I was thinking of building this one as the Captain Pike version. So maybe you'll see that later on. And then next to it is one of my favorite versions of the ships. It's the USS Reliant. And, um... I was I was struggling for a long time of how I wanted to paint it, but I saw a professional modeler, um, this particular Star Trek modeler, um, his name is Bill Kraus, and I saw how he painted his, and I freaked out and just went, that's, that's exactly how I wanted to paint mine, that's exactly how I wanted to do it. Um, I was toying with the idea of making it like the studio model, but I don't like the studio model because a lot of the colors they used on the studio models um, they're very bright colors and they don't look nice but they look that way because of the light they use and the cameras that they used at the time so I mean it makes sense but as far as the model goes I didn't like it so when I saw what he did I was like that's exactly where I wanted to go so maybe you'll see that one later this year too and then above it is an NX-01 um, shuttle pod. I got that same seller as the uh, Nebula. Because uh, I do love Enterprise, the series Enterprise. I don't care what people say. I really do like it. And I like the NX-01. A lot of stuff that they have in there. Um, next you're going to see here, this is a Grail kit. Actually, they both are. I have to admit, they're both Grail kits. This is the Avro Arrow. But it's missing the canopy. And I would have to spend about another hundred dollars to upgrade it properly. I No, sorry. I did not spend a hundred dollars on this. That should be clear. My brother found this for me at a thrift store and I think I paid ten bucks for it. It's gonna cost me about another hundred and twenty dollars to get all the parts I need to make it more accurate and build it up to scale. Um, and then uh, probably about another thirty dollars to get the scribers that I want for it. So I'm looking at about $150, 100 and, no, decals are probably going to be 20 bucks if I can find some. So I'm looking at close to $200 to get this kit up to par. But it's such a rare kit, like it's unbelievably rare in Canada. Um, to me it's worth putting in the extra money and the extra effort into just to have it as a really good kit. And then right above it here is the USS Excelsior. Um, that's the old AMT one that used to be super rare. It was when I bought it. Um, not anymore, because they've released it and they're going to release it again. Which I never thought they would they would ever do. Because they destroyed the molds when they made the Enterprise B. Um, they took the Excelsior, which is... The Enterprise B is an Excelsior class. And they destroyed the molds and that's how it happened. So, that's about it. Alright, I thought I was done and I was going to film an outro and then I realized I forgot two important kits that are sitting right here in front of me and the reason why they're not up here is because one is one I'm kind of researching and studying so I have the parts out all the time and the other one is simply too big for my shelf and I actually don't have space for it. I'm going to get to the first one here. Now this is one that I really want to be building right now and it's technically going to be my next kit that I work on but I'm asking a fellow who makes decals to make me some custom ones and he hasn't got back to me in a very long time he was going on about how he could do it but he was really busy 
and I haven't heard anything. I, I wrote him earlier this week. I haven't heard a thing back. I'm getting very dis. I'm getting a lot rather concerned that he's not going to be able to do it, which would be nice. You just have to tell me you can or can't do it. But anyways, the kick here. This is probably my fourth favorite airplane of all time. Is the A26 Invader in 48 scale from ICM. When they announced this kit, I practically flipped over backwards. I was so excited we were getting a new A26. Um, I happened to be in one of these when I was a kid, and I got to see them fly here in Alberta. And the, it's just one of my favorite planes. It's just a beautiful, beautiful plane. Um, it's just, it's a great looking aircraft. And it's in 48 scale. And now they have the Hobby Boss in 32nd scale. <laughs> and I have to admit, that is tempting. It's really, really tempting. But uh, for now, I got this one. And um, I, yeah, I hope he gets back to me. But I made up my mind here. I, I, I was sitting here thinking about this. And if he, can, if he doesn't get back to me, I can make stencils for the version that I want. I don't want to. That's the thing. I really, really don't want to because it'll be difficult. If I have to, uh, maybe I'll bench this one, or maybe he'll come through. And if I can't work on this one next, I'm going to work on those Starfighters. Because those Starfighters are really important to me. They are. Because Greg was kind enough to send me this uh, Japanese version, and I owe it to him to build it and build them right. Because it was a really nice thing he did for my birthday last year. And yeah, I owe it to the guy. He's been a great guy. So, if I can't work on that one, because I have been actually asked to build that one next, I'm going to do those Starfighters. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. So, um, this last one. I bought this basically from a guy who just, I think he just wanted it gone. He, he really didn't care, he just wanted it gone. It was still sealed in, in, the, in the plastic wrap, and... I was going to get something else, but then I told my dad about this, and he flipped, because this is his favorite jet of all time, and uh, <laughs> then my brother saw it, I sent him a link, and I said, what do you think about this, and he said, I have to build it, and yeah, this is the kit, guys, this is, this is the kit, it's big, I'm sorry, this is going to be difficult to hold up, it is the 32nd scale Tamiya F4 Phantom. I know what a lot of you are thinking. Well, Tamiya's coming out with another one in 48 scale. Yeah, and you know what? That one looks great, and I'm probably going to get one too, but this is 32nd scale, guys. Look how big this box is. It's huge. It's a monster behemoth of a kit. It is so big and so beautiful. And, uh, yeah, basically, my, my dad, I think he's going to steal it once it's built. Um, this is a great, great kit. I can't get over this. Um, the engineering, this came out in 1995. The engineering behind it is really exceptional. Uh, the only thing I don't like about it, like you can build this straight out of the box and you're going to have a very, very nice looking F4. But I really am not as happy with the, the cockpit and the whole cockpit. Uh, not just the ejection seats, that's why I wanted to buy the whole cockpit, and not just the ejection seats. Uh, so, I want to replace this whole thing. Um, have it m much uh, much nicer detail and all that sort of stuff. And I was thinking about replacing the nose, but now I'm not so sure. I'm not sure if I really want to go down that road or not. Um, but it's just, oh, it's such a great model. It's the exact one that I wanted. I wanted to get the Japanese version. Um, it comes with, believe it or not, check this out, it comes with, uh, Cartograph. Yeah, Cartograph. I'll just pull this out real quick. Uh, so, yeah, check this out. They bubble wrap the fuselage. I just, I love Tamiya. Again, this... It's stuff like this that just makes me a Tamiya fanboy forever. And then it has this plastic cover, or cardboard, and you pull this off. 
and you've got this beautiful, beautiful fuselage. So this is one of the things that I don't like that they did, is they molded some of the detail inside of here, and the resin replacement set, all of the cockpit detail is in a, a modular unit, and you just stick it inside of the, of the inside of there. And that's really what they should have done. Um, but that being said, it's an amazing kit. It's really, really amazing. Like I said, my dad has been bugging me to build it. And I went to go see if the parts were there, and they're not. They sold out of the cockpit. But I sent them an email, and they said that they, they're out, but they're getting more. They're just casting more. So, yeah, there is that. So that's pretty exciting. I'm really, really excited about that. So, yeah, not just replacing the seats. Like, I didn't ever say, but I wanted to replace the whole cockpit. But, that's beside the point. Um, that's about it for me, guys. I'm really sad. Really sad. I had my heart set on Nanton this year. I, I had my mind set up. I was going to find, you know, a bunch of science fiction kits and, you know, more of those... 30th anniversary Battlestar kits and some of the Mobius ones, which to be honest, there probably wasn't going to be any. It's just, you know, you get that youthful optimism. And, you know, in a way, what can you do? <laughs> you just, it's, it's going to be one of these things, but it's an event I was really just looking forward to spending time with my dad and my brother. But in hindsight, too, you know, I've got an awful lot of stuff here to build. So, I can't really complain. I've got a lot of great stuff here to build, and a lot of this stuff has been sent by generous people like you. So, I just gotta shut up, really be grateful for what I've been given, give back, and build a bunch of more kits here and get some stuff done. That's really what I, that is really, honestly, what I should be doing, and that's what I'm gonna do. So, I would like to say a huge thank you to everybody who has been watching my videos. Um, last year was difficult. Um, this beginning of this year has been difficult too but I'm hoping things will get better and um, hoping that this will be a good year after all as far as modeling goes and is concerned I'm going to try and put out more videos I have filmed a couple of demonstration style videos that I hope to put up soon um, get those edited it's just it's a difficult toss up between building and editing and I seem to be focused more on the building and the writing than I am on the video so I, I apologize for that I try I'm gonna try harder and I'm having a lot of problems with my YouTube account right now and they're and I contacted someone at at Google and they're like oh there's nothing wrong with your account I'm like really because I'm having issues with it no nah, there's nothing wrong with it it's all in your head and then they give me these tutorials on how to fix it and none of the directions work like it'll tell me to go to a page and all the information on the page is like not even there so I have to spend some time doing that oh and the stupid um, US taxes thing I have to file fill that out um, maybe tomorrow I don't know when I'm not I'm really not impressed with that that's really stupid stupid tax that's what they call them stupid YouTube taxes so hopefully I can figure that all out but in the meantime thank you so much guys for watching um, please again check out all the channels and pages in the description that I've left down below and if you like anything you want to just say hi you can leave me a comment and I'll do my best to reply to it as quickly as I can but for now this is Rebels of Cloud 9 hope you guys are doing well hope you guys are having fun and I'll see you all later take care